till that meth was used as an antidepressant from the 1930s to the 1950s. A man named Gordon Alls patented the drug after he was injected with it and found that he became talkative and gained a sense of well-being. I am pretty sure, if you took a medicinal amount of meth in a pill, as opposed to a fucked up level of meth snorted, smoked, or injected, it probably would work well. It's just the chance for abuse is very high. Amphetamine was legal and used in most countries at beginning of last century. The Nazis used it famously for their invasion of France and Japan used it in their armed services and factories. Doctors all around world used to prescribe it freely as an antidepressant. It helps for it in some cases. It wasn't a miracle for my case, but as a dude with ADHD and depression, it helped with both for sure. It had other effects so I stopped using it, but I might go back, edit, I wasn't reading clearly, talking about Adderall, which is amphetamines, not methamphetamines. But I imagine the experience re-depression would be similar for both with the right dosage. And then he took apart a VW bus in his front yard and had no idea how to put it back together. Didn't you know? This is why everyone was terrifyingly happy and really good at housekeeping in the 50s. They were all on prescriptions like this. Trey's done too, because you can't be depressed if you're asleep. Meth may have been used as an antidepressant from the 1930s to the 1950s but it was originally patented as a nasal decongestant, I know this because it was my grandfather, George Pinus, M. D. The first allergist in Southern California, who hired Gordon Alls, a chemist, in 1928 to try to isolate the active ingredient in ephedrine, which was the nasal decongestant of choice at the time, and was made from a root which was known only to grow in China. In the late 1920s China was in the midst of a civil war, and fearing that the supply of the root would be cut off, my grandfather had the idea of isolating the active ingredient and synthesizing it. That required the skill set of a chemist which he did not have, hence his hiring of Gordon Alls. The first patent, in 1928, of amphetamine, which is what the synthesized ingredient became to be known as, was licensed to Smith, Klein Laboratories, and marketed in atomizer form as the nasal decongestant Benzedrine. It soon appeared that Benzedrine had certain side effects unrelated to being a nasal decongestant. As AP. S. Ten years later, Smith, Klein marketed a new drug, Dexedrine, which was merely Benzedrine plus a barbiturate. Deleted. I had a doctor suggest opiates as an antidepressant. I was seeing this doctor to treat my opioid dependency stemming from long-term depression, among other things. He cited a study from Harvard which showed that people with depression who had never taken drugs felt happier after they were given doses of opiates. I stopped seeing that doctor. Well yes, meth is an amazing drug, it makes you feel immense pleasure, makes every boring thing fun even if it's repetitive lets you stay awake for a long time without feeling tired and boosts your confidence to that of any superstar. Problem is that it's extremely addictive, destroys your cardiovascular system and rewires your brain's reward center so that nothing you do off meth will ever be as good as even staring at a wall while on meth. Meth is a wonderful drug but like anything too good here in life it's got some massive negatives that outweigh the positives. I was prescribed Adderall for years and it helped my depression more than any antidepressant ever has, by a long shot. It probably helped my depression more than it helped my ADHD, which itself was significant. But I haven't had access to my meds in 5 years now, not sure if I ever will again. I'm a wreck without them. John F. Kennedy was on meth while in office. HTTPS colon slash slash New York mag com slash intelligencer slash 2013 slash 11 slash strange saga of jfk and dr feel good html fun fact this is why breaking bad writers included the scene of skyla white singing to ted bennett like marilyn monroe to jfk since both were using methamphetamines well i'm sure it is in low doses however it has a high abuse potential I don't know why anyone expects these highly addictive drugs to not feel good. There's a reason you get addicted. It's a fantastic time, you feel amazing and happy and energized and all around ready to take on the world.
you just slowly poison your brain and body. Please visualize a tweaker railing an enormous bowl of crystal, hurling down the pipe to explode in a shower of glass fragments and screaming I have such a sense of well-being right now. This is a highly misleading and arguably dangerous title. 50 mg, especially for, of meth for a non-tolerant or sensitive person could easily result in death. The person in the article was injected with a different substance, amphetamine, which is easily four or five times weaker than methamphetamine is. Dexedrine, dextroamphetamine, has very similar effects as meth, my mother's psychiatrist lost his license after over-prescribing it in the 80s. Her doctors also misdiagnosed her severe abdominal pain as due to the detrimental effects of the dexedrine on her teeth instead of the colon cancer that eventually killed her. It's not well known but lawyers routinely microdose with pharmaceutical grade meth before a court presentation to help them focus and articulate at a heightened level. If I had a dollar for every time I walked into another lawyer's office who was preparing for court I could have long ago retired. Meth is a roller coaster ride. You'll feel really good, and incredibly productive for a good 10 to 12 hours. But what comes up must come down, you'll be exhausted and depressed the next day. I can't think of a worse drug for someone already dealing with highs and lows in their life. If you are interested there is a book called Blitzed by Norman Oler that describes the drug usage in the Nazi Germany. The book got a lot of criticism but I suppose that the drug consumption during the World War II was really high. So you're saying I should do meth? This is purely anecdotal but I'd be interested to hear more about the use of amphetamines for treating depression. When I was depressed during college I started noticing that my Adderall, which I took sparingly for ADHD, became a life-saving tool in fighting my depression. I didn't take it every day but if things got really bad I only had to take a small dose, 5 mg, and it would save me from spiraling and maybe doing something dangerous. It gave me a sense of short-term purpose that was absolutely game-changing for my worst days while I waited for the antidepressants to kick in properly and for my life situation to get better. I'm not saying this to persuade people to try Adderall, please talk to your doctor before taking any medications and never take meds without a doctor's approval. Adderall has a lot of side effects to consider before using it. But I am curious if there's more medical potential there, because I personally found it so helpful. That's why I take Adderall for my depression. My doc wanted me on Prozac but all that did was slow my neurons and make it impossible to orgasm. Adderall cures my ADHD and depression. I've spent quite a lot of time meditating on why this works and I've come to believe that ADHD is the root cause for a lot of depression cases. Adderall helps stable an ADHD mind and relieves the mind of depressing thoughts. BTW, as long as the subject is up, have advice for young people. There was a really active drug culture around where I was growing up, and I saw more people get their lives fucked up from meth than anything else, I think. If you're going to experiment with meth, the difference between someone who does okay and someone who gets wrecked comes down to one simple question. Stay home or call in sick. The trick with meth is that it affects people for more than 24 hours. People often say it's Saturday night, I'm going to try some drugs. For almost any other drug, you're probably okay by Monday morning. Meth can commonly keep people from sleeping Saturday night and most of Sunday night. The other thing about meth is that it's sort of like super coffee. People clean their house, finish their paper. At first, they feel energetic and lucid. So, they try it Saturday night, have fun, clean the house. Then Sunday comes around, and they need to get good sleep because they didn't sleep Saturday. But, they're still a little buzzed so they don't sleep well on Sunday or at all. Now it's Monday morning. They've had zero to four hours of sleep since Friday night. They've got a decision to make. They can call in sick, or they can use some more super coffee. And that's it. Of course, choosing super coffee is a downward spiral where they'll need even more super coffee on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. So that little decision right there either lets people off with a warning or sets them on a years long descent into despair, desperation, and often incarceration. Not helping anything is that meth makes people paranoid, 
so they often think that if they stay home people will know, so the false sense that meth is the solution for the problems meth causes is additionally insidious, so yeah. My friend group growing up was very bohemian, lots of experimentation with all sorts of drugs. People were pretty savvy and careful, and, for the most part, got away unscathed. Except for meth. Meth took a few people down really dark paths. So, if you try meth, be prepared to call in sick.